Hello, dear friends. Welcome. My name is August. This is Cozy Rosie Reads. And today is my second edition of picking my TBR, my monthly TBR, using my TBR jar. This is a jar of prompts that I made for myself, and there are just so many eclectic different prompts to help me choose my monthly TBR. So I will go ahead and link my June TBR video down below if you're interested. It is just so much fun. I honestly can't believe how much joy this little jar brings me. I think it's so important to have little things like this that you look forward to, even if it's just once every month. But ever since my June TBR, I have legit been counting down the days so I could do this again with you all. Like this is just so much fun. It is like the brightest spot in my month is like just getting to pick and look at my books and do like little challenges to figure out what I'm gonna be reading. So thank you so incredibly much for joining. I'm really excited. If you hear louder than normal street traffic, it's because it's raining. It has been raining every day for the past like four days. And I've just noticed that when it's rainy, the street traffic noises really amplify. You hear everybody driving by, even if they have a quiet car, which in my area, most people don't. So it is usually really loud, but I just apologize. But I just, I don't wanna wait any longer. Like, let's just do this. We're not gonna have a nice day for another two weeks, okay? So if you don't know the rules of the challenge jar, I'm gonna pick 10 prompts in here, figure them out. This is my physical TBR all here. And we're just gonna go from there. Pick the books that I wanna read in July. I can't believe it's gonna be July. <laughs> I'm not ready. Yeah, so last month in June, my TBR was so freaking successful, and I'll obviously be talking about the books more in depth in my June wrap up, so definitely stay tuned if you wanna see my thoughts on the books that I actually ended up picking. But I did notice something that I'm going to start implementing for this round, is this time of year, or maybe this season of my life that I'm in right now, I'm definitely gravitating more towards shorter books. I'm finding longer books to be a little intimidating. I'm finding them a little challenging to even want to read, but I feel like it's really, really hard for me right now to like commit to reading a larger book. But I know that in fall and winter, I, I love a long ass book, but right now that's not it. So my goal is to be a little bit more cognizant of what I'm gonna be picking for July and making sure that the length is something that um, I can handle. But who knows, I can't control the jar. So let's go ahead. We're gonna pick 10 prompts one at a time and figure out what the heck I'm gonna be reading in July. And I just get so geeked out. Let's do a little shake first. The first prompt for my July TBR is reread. It's a reread. Oh, I was not anticipating. I was not anticipating that, but holy shit, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. I know exactly. Okay, 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 okay. We are gonna be doing freaking Aquamarine by Alice Hoffman. Ah! I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Okay, I chatted about this one in one of my book hauls. I don't know which one, but yeah, I bought this off of Facebook Marketplace because, because I just really, really wanted to reread it. This is a book that I read when I was way younger after the movie came out, which I freaking love. I love the movie. And I remember as a kid, I was so disappointed that this wasn't as like fun or beachy or like teenagery as the movie. The movie is definitely more lighthearted. I remember this as being kind of quite dark. I really wanted to reread it. And then that's when I found out it was Alice Hoffman who wrote it. I did not know that because I was too young to understand, but I have already read Practical Magic. I've read Here on Earth. I really love Alice Hoffman's writing style, but this is gonna be the most perfect summer reread. Are you kidding me? Like a book about mermaids. <gasps> And it's amazing to me like how tiny this book is. So it's only like a hundred pages and the font size is really large and spaced out. We even have like little beautiful illustrations in here. This is a perfect reread. Oh my gosh, this is gonna take me like an hour to read, but I'm just so excited. Look at that, how magical. A mermaid book. So this is what I'll be reading in July. The first prompt, success. Prompt number two, I have it here. What do we have? <gasps> Ooh, yellow cover. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. Okay, I do have quite a few yellow covers. Let's go ahead and pick them all out and choose from there. First off, we have Lamp in the Spine. This is actually a collection of different short stories and poems. This was like a literary magazine kind of thing. And 1973. I found it at a thrift store. So this is just like, yeah, like a collection of really random 
things. We have illustrations in here. It's just like an artisan literary magazine kind of thing, but it is so beautifully bound and it's so freaking gorgeous. It's really eclectic. It's really weird. It's not even on Goodreads because it's not technically a book. We also have Olive Kitterich. This is definitely a book that I've been saving for fall though. I don't know why. I just feel more fall vibes from this because it takes place in Maine and I don't know. I think I'm going to save this one, but that's another yellow cover. Oh, I love yellow. Then we have Tin Man by Sarah Winman. This is just a beautiful cover. Do you see that gold in there? It is stunning. This is another short, beautiful book. There's definitely some yellow elements in there. The cover reads, breaks your heart and warms it all at once which is a synopsis by Matt Haig. So I'm really curious in reading that one. I've been really, really wanting to read this though too. It's about a male-male romance and I just, I'm really curious. And then the last one I have is also very short and that is Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt, which I have never read. Um, I read Natalie Babbitt's other book, um, Search for Delicious, which I love. It's one of my childhood favorites. Oh man, these are all so good and so cool. Look at that yellow. Let's just take a moment and appreciate this yellow. I want to eat all of this. I want to just eat this like a big yellow sandwich. Look at that. Oh, you know what? I actually have one more too. Of Stern Men by Elizabeth Gilbert. This is a really fun book that I feel like would be really, really fun in the summertime. It's about lobster fishermen in Maine and a young woman who wants to join them and kind of like the sexism of the lobster trade, kind of a little bit of a Romeo and Juliet. She's in love with a guy who's on the, you know, enemy's lobster boat. This would be fun too. Shit. Ah! <laughs> I make these prompts so it'll be easier for me to pick books. Okay, let's just go. Okay, I think I'm not gonna do Tuck Everlasting. I'm not gonna do Olive Kitterich. That means we're left with these amazing three books. You know what? I'm gonna put back Lamp in the Spine. So now we're between these two. Why is this so hard for me? Oh, okay, you know what? I think I'm going to implement a new rule. That's what we do. We learn from our experiences. I think I'm gonna start with Stern Men and then kind of see where the rest of this TBR challenge jar takes me. If there are bigger books or if I wanna change, I definitely should allow myself to do that. If at the very end, I think that maybe this won't fit my TBR or if my TBR is looking a little too extensive, I can switch it out for like a shorter, smaller book. Is that fair? I think that's pretty fair. So for right now, let's leave all of these out. We'll put Stern Men here. Let's do the spines facing out, eh? I'm gonna move these out of sight, out of mind for a little bit. Let's do prompt number three. A book you were gifted. Oh, that's fun. Oh, that's so fun. Okay, a book I was gifted. Okay, let's pull them out. I actually don't have a lot of books that I was gifted. I have The First Sister by Lyndon A. Lewis. I did try start reading this in May. My sister gifted me this for my birthday, which is so kind and so sweet, but I wasn't really connecting with it at that time in May. So maybe I can give this another go but I kind of just want to distance myself a little bit more. It was just like a month ago that I tried reading this, but it's an option. Then we also have The People in the Trees by Hanya Yanagihara. My friend found this, the same friend who gifted me this, like she is just a little whimsical, magical little fairy. Like she's just always finding things and thinking of me. And that's honestly the best, like that's just the nicest feeling in the world. But she saw this in a little free library and thought of me. This is, yeah, the same author as A Little Life, which is up over there. I, I'm definitely leaning more towards this, but it makes me nervous because it is big. It's very, very big. It's a uh, quite tiny text. So I only have these two that I've been gifted. Oh, JK, JK, JK. I actually also have House of Many Ways by Diana Wynne Jones. This is the sequel to Howl's Moving Castle which I didn't quite enjoy, but I still would really, really like to read the sequel. I read that in April and I don't feel like I've given myself enough time to decompress from Howl's Moving Castle because it still disappointed me so much and I didn't really have a super great time with it. It sounds so rude because I was gifted such nice books, but like not, like none of them are calling to me. Ah! This is what makes this challenge so difficult. Okay, okay, you know what? Hmm. I think in terms of like the mood of July, wanting nature elements and stuff, I think I might be able to get pretty lost in uh, The People in the Trees by Hanya Yanagihara. I love this cover. 
Look at that, it's beautiful. Fun fact, this is actually an ARC copy. I feel like this is gonna be a little intense. I feel like this one might freak me out a little bit just because like I said, I'm not really into longer books. So I think already I might swap out Stern Men. While this doesn't look like a big book, the text is quite tiny. So I think already I'm gonna swap that out. I'm gonna go with uh, People in the Trees. We have Aquamarine, trusty tiny little Aquamarine who won't freak me out, look at that. <laughs> and then I think to balance it all out, we're gonna do Tin Man by Sarah Winman. Look at us switching things up. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay. I can I can get down with that. Prompt number four is da, 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 da. Ooh. This is fun. Book set in a big city. Oh, this is a thinker. Oh, this is such a good I'm sorry. I just get so excited. Every prompt I'm like, oh my, wow. But I really am. Like this is so much fun to me. I love thinking about this kind of stuff. Okay, let's see here. What's set in a big city that I know? Like I feel like there might be a lot on here that is set in a big city. But I just, I just don't know. Let's see. The Invention of Anna. I think this is set in New York City. Yeah, okay, so this takes place in Brooklyn. This is a book by Michael Rosengard. It's like a literary fiction, but it weaves a story, uh, maybe across generations or like a romance, but it has a lot of aspects of time. There's a little clock on there and physics and math. Ooh, okay. We have a book that I recently just picked up that I was kind of interested in. This one takes place in San Francisco. This is The Secret of the Villa Mimosa. I actually started reading this because I found it in a little free library and I didn't bring an extra book while I was out, so I just started reading it then, and I was actually really intrigued. Don't judge the cover. This looks like a freaking like old 80s, kind of like Michael Connelly kind of vibe, but there is like this painting and wine glasses. This book follows a woman who was super close to death, and she is found. She's actually alive. She fell down this huge trench. Um, and she suffers from amnesia and she works with this female psychiatrist who's trying to piece together her past. It kind of might be a sapphic relationship. It kind of alludes to like romance and they just try to retrace her steps. But like I started reading it and it immediately opens with the crime. Um, and you don't know who the man who did this is, but we're like reading his plot to do all these awful things to this woman. So, oh, this is another big book though. What the heck am I doing? Um, I really want to read this though because I already did start reading it. I got to only page 11, but I was just like having a lot of fun with it. I really like kind of like this murder mystery. This is by Elizabeth Adler. It was published in 1995. And I don't know, like I'm just kind of feeling this one. I really, really liked it when I started reading it. I feel like it's really fun. It's really entertaining. It's gonna keep me on my toes. I'm definitely feeling a little bit pulled to this. So I'm gonna choose this one over The Invention of Anna. This one takes place in San Francisco. This is New York City. I think we're gonna go with more San Francisco vibes. What an eclectic stack, my friends. We have quite the eclectic stack. I'm gonna actually put away some of these books that I already have here. That's a little bit better. All right, let's go ahead and move on to prompt number five. I feel like so much time has passed and we're not even halfway. <gasps> classic, a classic book. We need to pick a classic. Dang it, okay. I knew ahead of time what I wanted to pick if I picked classic, and that was Watership Down by Richard Adams. I want to read this so freaking bad, but it's huge. It's chunky. Yet again, text is tiny. So I'm not going to do that. We already have two really big books on here that are making me squirm a wee bit. Shoot, friends, this is really hard. I have several here. I'm kind of leaning towards one more than the other. I picked my shortest classics. I have a whole shelf of like really chunky classics. It's just not going to happen this month. I'm telling you, I, I cannot. We have Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf, Beloved by Toni Morrison, The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison, and we have Queer by William S. Burroughs. I'm not sure if this book counts as a classic or is considered a classic, but I've never finished reading a William S. Burroughs book and I feel like I really, really want to in my lifetime. And I honestly have already read a book by Toni Morrison, not saying that I don't want to read these because I really, really do, but I've already read from her. I love her writing style. I'm so excited to read these but I have already read a book and I've also already read a book by Virginia Woolf. So I think I want to give myself a new experience with a new classic book that I haven't like read from at all from an author I haven't read from. So I think I'm actually going to go with Queer by William S. Burroughs. Let me know down below in the comments if this, <laughs> if 
this counts or am I just like really trying to bend the rules? But I think that he is like a very well-known author. I definitely want to read his work. I feel like he's definitely an important icon in the literary community. So I think I'm gonna add this to my list. Let's do it. Why the heck not? Voila. All right, let's put these back then. All right, prompt number six. Wow, these have definitely been testing me this month. Ooh, black cover. Oh, mama. I already know what I'm gonna pick. And I wish I wasn't picking these right now because I really wanted to do a summer book haul, which I'll still do, but a lot of these books are actually gonna be included in that. So pretend you didn't see these, okay? I really, 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 really wanna read this. This is called In the Palm of Darkness by Myra Montero. And I don't know if you can tell very well by the cover, there is a little red, like blood red frog and then this handprint on here. Ooh, sinister. This sounds so eerie so cool this is a book that follows these like biologists as they are trekking through the haitian jungle trying to find this extinct frog called the blood frog and it just talks about the dangers of the forest the dangers of the current climate in haiti the kind of like tragic tales and backstories behind all of the biologists searching for it this is exactly the stuff that I love to read in summertime. It's like moody and dark and spooky, but there's still this like luscious tropical feeling. Oh my gosh, ever since I got this, I've been like counting down when I can read it. And this cover is like pure black, so yes. This is probably one of the easiest prompts I've had because I know I've been wanting to read this as soon as I got it. I only got this like two weeks ago, so I have been like ready, like emotionally, physically ready to read this. So that feels good. That feels really good that I can like pick something so easily because the rest of these have been so hard for me to like commit to a book. Oh my gosh. <gasps> welcome friend. Welcome. Yes. Look at that. Now I'm feeling a little bit more excitement. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Prompt number seven. Here we go. What do we have? Okay, we got the letter Z and I actually don't have any physical books on my TBR that start with the letter Z. So I'm going to put a pass on this one and redraw. I will put it back though, because who knows one day I might have a book that starts with Z but right now I do not. And let's do a little redraw. And for clarification, this TBR jar is to help me go through my physical TBR. I'm really trying not to pick up books on audio for this. Like audiobooks are just kind of like picked willy nilly for me, much more mood like. And I'm not trying to like download any eBooks. Like I just really want to work on my physical TBR because a lot of these have just been sitting and waiting for me and they deserve time to shine, right? Ooh, oh, this is fun. We have a middle grade book. So obviously we already have Aquamarine, so that's cool. But I also have from the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler. This is kind of like a classic children's lit by E.L. Conixberry. Yet again, we also have The House of Many Ways by Diana Wynne Jones. Maybe this challenge jar is just really trying to tell me like, just read this, but I don't know. I'm not quite there yet. What else do we have? Yet again, we also have Tuck Everlasting by Natalie Babbitt. I think I'm actually getting pulled to this one. I think there was a movie of Tuck Everlasting. I really am not super familiar with the plot. I know the basic premise that there's eternal life and I really like Natalie Babbitt's writing style. I think I'm actually gonna go with this. I've never read it. I feel like it's kind of considered a classic in the middle grade genre. So I think I'm gonna do this. That sounds like a lot of fun and I would love to figure out my own thoughts on it. And this copy has water damage, which I love. Yeah, did you hear that? That's nice. Let's do this one. We are nearing the end, friends. We have prompt number eight. Let's do this one. Ooh, boy. What has been on TBR longest? I know exactly what book it is. I'm not dreading it at all like I think I'm actually gonna really enjoy this book but for some reason now it just intimidates me because it's been on there for so long you know what I'm saying and that is Map of Salt and Stars and um, I'm covering the author's name up here because it is their dead name I actually have to go and look up their name. One moment. Okay, it is by Zane Jacarder. It says, two unforgettable heroines come of age in perilous times. In the summer of 2011, just after Noor loses her father to cancer, her mother moves Noor and her sisters from New York City back to Syria to be closer to their family. But when a shell destroys Noor's house, she and her family are forced to flee across seven countries of the Middle East and North Africa in search of safety. So I 
definitely am looking forward to reading this. I picked it up for a reason because I'm really excited to read it. The first like opening pages are so beautifully written. So I know I picked this up for a reason. It's just been on my TBR the absolute longest. I think I got this like two years ago. So I am really excited and looking forward to reading it. And probably if it's gonna be featured in any of my reading vlogs, I will probably tape over the dead name and put the author's real name. So that is that. Perfect. Prompt number nine. Oh, we have another letter. It is just the letter D. Okay. Oh, ooh, this is going to be kind of fun. I only have one book that starts with the letter D, and that is The Dying Game by Asa Avdik. The front reads, do you live to play or play to live? I'm not actually super familiar about the plot, but let's see. The year, 2037. The Soviet Union never fell, and much of Europe has been consolidated under the totalitarian union of friendship. The location, a remote island off the coast of Sweden. Yeah. The occasion, a 48-hour competition among seven successful professionals for a top secret intelligence position. The assignment, Anna Francis, a workaholic bureaucrat with a nine-year-old daughter she rarely sees, must stage her death and observe how the six other competitors react. Who will take control? Who will crack under pressure? And can Anna save her life by staging her death? Wow, this sounds like a lot of fun. I feel like this will be a really fast paced page turner. And I really feel like this moody, a remote island off the coast of Sweden that is like 100% my vibe. So I'm excited for this one. I really am. We have one more prompt, prompt number 10. Give us something good. Don't scare me. Make this fun. Please, 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 please. We have Ooh, random genre generator. Thank you. Thank you, little jar. Okay, let me get my laptop out and we're gonna go ahead and look up Wheel of Names. Okay, we gotta put in all the genres though. So we'll do nonfiction, literary fiction, young adult, fantasy, science fiction, please lord don't, poetry, short story, historical fiction. What the heck else? I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, duh. okay, we need mystery or romance. Okay, let's go ahead and hit click to spin. I'm scared here. I'm really scared. Oh God, okay. Mystery, mystery, mystery. Anyone SpongeBob? Debbie, mystery? That's fun. We're gonna end on a fun, fun note with some mystery. Let's see, I have <laughs> probably the most like mystery of mysteries is Murder Now, Pay Later by Lauren Payne. This is a large print mystery, severe water damage. It's about an international socialite who was murdered and strangled by her own hair and there wasn't a single clue large print, water damage, kind of a vibe. I feel like this might be a little hilarious. Maybe it'll actually be fun. Who knows? So that's an option. I also have this awesome mystery novel about bird watchers. <laughs> it's called A Bird in the Hand by Anne Cleves. This actually sounds kind of fun. There was a bird watcher lying in a marsh on the Norfolk coast with his head bashed in and his binoculars still around his neck. And yeah, it's like a, a bird watcher mystery. I don't know. That sounds like a lot of fun. So these are more like kind of like classic mysteries, who done it. I feel like they're used for the sole purpose of being a mystery and having entertainment value. If anything, I'm probably leaning more towards a bird in the hand, but based on this beautiful freaking cover, I've been kind of saving it for fall, but it's been rainy, it's been moody here. This actually might be a really fun, like rainy mystery to read because it hasn't really felt like July. It hasn't felt like a hot summer. You know, some of these might work really well for like hot summer nights, but this is more of like, yeah, like a, a moody, fall, cozy kind of mystery with like bird watchers. I don't know, that sounds really intriguing to me. Honestly, I think that's it for my mystery. I bet I have some others that are more like suspense. I might have mystery elements. Based on the titles here, I'm not seeing anything that's pulling that kind of like sense of mystery out of me. I, d I don't think I have anything else that's like super just straight up mystery. So I think for that case, I think I'm actually going to pick A Bird in the Hand by Anne Cleves. I have been wanting to read this for a while now and have just been kind of like waiting for the right time. But this just sounds like a lot of fun, like a moody, misty, English countryside vibe. Add that baby right to this list, this little pile. And oh my gosh, friends, there we have it. This is my... Oh my gosh, it's a lot heavier than I anticipated. My July TBR. Wow, what an eclectic mix of books. I feel 
a little intimidated. I'm not going to lie. I definitely feel intimidated by this pile, but I think that's a good thing because I'm intimidated because a lot of these books have been sitting on my shelves for a while and have been like watching me like, when are you going to read me? Hello. So I think that, you know, reading some kind of classics, reading some books that have been out on my shelves for like two years, reading some fun new books, reading some books that are a little bit chunkier, like it's just a really eclectic, bizarre pile. I feel like none of these really make sense. There's not really a theme. The TBR challenge jar actually really challenged me this time. None of these answers were really straightforward or easy for me. And I really enjoyed that. I still had a lot of fun with you all picking these. I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts if any of these books sound interesting to you. If you would have picked differently, you can argue with me, it's fine. I'm so excited to tell you more about these books and my thoughts on them in my upcoming weekly reading vlogs. I'm excited for my July wrap up. What the heck am I gonna read first? Thank you all so incredibly much for being here, for staying tuned and watching. I hope this was still fun and entertaining. These ones were so difficult to pick, but it was just so much fun. I love this process of picking out books. I, I love the challenge. I love the choosing what mood I'll kind of be in and trying to anticipate what I'll enjoy reading. It's so much fun. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope you had a good time. I hope it was fun for you all. Thank you again so incredibly much and I will see you all again very soon in my next video. Stay cozy my friends. Bye!